My special guest this week is Dr. Timothy Mousseau, a professor of biological sciences at the University of South Carolina. He currently also serves as the Associate Vice President for Research and the Dean of the Graduate School at University of Southern South Carolina. Dr. Mousseau's past research has focused on the genetic basis of adaptations to changing environmental conditions in wild animal populations, and he has published more than 120 scientific papers on this topic. For the past 12 years, Dr. Mousseau and his colleagues have been studying the ecological impacts of the Chernobyl disaster on wild plant and animal populations living in the so-called zone of alienation surrounding the destroyed nuclear power plant. Dr. Mousseau is considered one of the leading world authorities concerning the impacts of low-dose radiation on natural ecosystems. I just got back from two weeks in Chernobyl and we found, again, three birds, three out of, three out of 500 birds that had very, very large visible abdominal tumors. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, that, that may not sound like a lot, but that's an incredibly high frequency uh, for that kind of, of, of growth. And uh, so our plan in the coming years is to start taking biopsies. Of yeah, and making the diagnosis. So now also, Tim Mousseau, um, you've also found that a high percentage of the birds have smaller than normal brains. Is that correct? <laughs> You know that our we we just published those results uh, a few months ago in uh, Plus One. The you know we did this survey of about 550 birds last summer, mm. and, and uh, we took uh, measurements on on the brain sizes, the head sizes, and 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 inferred the brain sizes from that uh, for birds living in you know high, medium, and lowly contaminated areas. Mm. Uh, for over 40 different species, and we found that for, on average, across the community, the birds living in the contaminated areas had a 5% smaller brain, reflecting uh, impaired neurological development. This has been reported before yeah. uh, as, a, as a common response to you know, radioactive uh, contaminants. Yeah. It, just, it hadn't been reported in birds. But what made this observation particularly interesting was the fact that when we looked at birds in the contaminated areas, we found that the birds with the smaller brains were less likely to survive to the second year. Uh, so there were there were the, the 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 birds that were older were the ones that had the larger brains, uh, and oh. in, you know again in indicating that there was some cognitive uh, uh, relationship to the smaller brain. So the radiation was affecting the neurological development which was directly influencing survival, probably as a result of their ability to avoid predators or find food. Or well, now, how can we relate that to everything you've just described, Tim, the genetic abnormalities, the, the um, deformities in the birds, the small brains, to the human populations, specifically in Belarus and the Ukraine? I do know from the Chernobyl report that you helped get published by the New York Academy of Sciences that there are homes full of very deformed children and in fact I've seen a film called Chernobyl Heart uh, that documents these children, grossly deformed children in, in very he heavily contaminated areas, number one. Number two, I do also know that um, I think in Sweden and Norway and Ukraine um, there there seems to be amongst children who have been exposed to radioactive material from Chernobyl a lower than normal IQ level um, and also we all are seeing uh, you know a high incidence of malignancies amongst people living in these highly contaminated areas so can you extrapolate directly from your animal experience experiments or, or observations to human populations Dr. Timothy Mousseau? Yeah, you know, it's um, it, I, it's something we we try to avoid, but but it really, you know, it, it, it it's just so overwhelming. Uh, you, one of the advantages of working with wild populations of plants and animals is that you don't have to worry about some of the confounding factors that you have with in human populations. 
you know, when, when uh, you know, these, these reports, these statistics associated with birth defects in humans and genetic effects in humans and infertility effects and IQ effects, these, these have all been uh, relatively well known for a while, but, but the, uh, you know, the, the traditional interpretation has been that these are the consequence of environmental factors like alcoholism and smoking, as well as uh, immunosuppression resulting from the stress of the disaster, rather than the direct consequences of radiation. But, but as you know, you know, birds don't drink, uh, they don't smoke, uh, we don't, they don't get depressed as far as I know, uh, at least. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, and, and so when we start to see parallel patterns of, of of, 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 of what appear to be responses to the contaminants, you can't help but think that there must be some direct relationship with the human uh, populations as well. 